This archived clip from Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Join us live every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Hey, welcome to New York City Resistor. We're here in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, right next to the Baker Bot Bot Cave. New York City Resistor got its first space in 2007, but we quickly outgrew that one, so we moved here in 2010. Come in. This is by far our coolest tool. It's actually the only tool we've got that pays for itself. It's an Epilog Mini. It's 35 watts. One of the things it does is it cuts and it etches. So we use it to make stencils, um, little signs. We use it to make enclosures, patterns, etc. I'm Bill. Uh, this is my project. It's uh, based on a Bug Labs embedded Linux computer. Uh, what it does is it reports whether anybody's in the space uh, to IRC, because we have an IRC channel that we like to hang out in. Um, people who are on the IRC channel can actually ask the bot whether or not there's somebody moving around, um, and it'll tell you uh, if anybody's here or how long it's been. And the other cool thing is it will tell you what the temperature is, because sometimes in the dead of winter or in the summer, it's uh, either really cold or really hot, and you may not want to be the first person here. So basically what I have is um, it's a motion sensor and a kind of general purpose I.O. board that uh, can measure the temperature off of this uh, little component. Um, it connects to the internet and uh, runs a Java-based IRC bot. Um, people who are in the channel can ask the bot questions and get answers to them. The biggest challenge so far has been to actually learn how to write Java that works on this device. Um, once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's a lot of fun to actually uh, pull together the different components and um, string them together in kind of a neat little application. What I'd like to do with the project in the future is to expand it so that not only can you uh, find out what the temperature is or find out if somebody's in space, but also actually control things in space. Like maybe turn on the heat or, uh, or check to see if the, um, the lights are on or something. Uh, I intend to do that because the, the same little I.O. board has input and output pins and you can switch them on and off remotely, which is kind of cool. This happens to be one of many types of embedded Linux systems. It's not the only one on the market. It would be really cool if somebody kind of built a hackerspace operating system that allowed you to use an embedded Linux computer to uh, interact with common things like uh, infrared controls or uh, door sensors and stuff and to build it with the idea that you're going to use it in a shared space so that you have a common set of libraries that people can leverage to do uh, things that most any hackerspace might need. My name is Alicia Gibb and this is Katerina Moda and she's a badass. This is a project that was created at NYC Resistor and it was in conjunction with myself, uh, Katerina and Shelby Arnold who is a pop-up engineer. We created a pop-up book and the inspiration from this came from thinking about science fiction and cartoons from our childhood and nostalgia. So we took Penny's book from Inspector Gadget and tried to use um, some different technologies to actually make it real. Some of the research that we put into this book actually came from uh, Julian Bleeker's research on science fiction and what happens when you take that and make it a reality. So we have a couple different areas in the book. There's some EL wire up here that we have. This is an RGB LED and we sort of recalled Penny having some sort of radar in her book. So this is our interpretation of a radar. And then down here we have a Pepper's Ghost image. So if you're familiar with Pepper's Ghost, it's actually an image that's on the inside of this box with a transparent piece of plastic there. The way that it is angled with the light shining up, you can actually see the image as a ghost image on the back of the box. Somebody was very nice and gave us a bunch of teensies to use at the space, and so 
we used that to drive the book. We have a lot of con uh, copper tape in the book, and some of the folds were breaking where the copper tape would be folded G out of the um, MIT Media Lab. She had some really great advice for us. She showed us taking a piece of um, conductive fabric and actually stapling that to the copper tape, mm -hmm. and that made a, a, you know, a very flexible, stronger binding that you could fold. I did a fun little hack. Uh, it's very simple. I think anyone could do it. Essentially, I took an NES light gun and Mitch Altman's TV be gone and put them together. I threw away my Nintendo because it broke, so I took the, the light gun out of it. And once you think about it, it's really just obvious. Like, what better uh, device could you have for turning off a TV than an NES light gun? You got that? And you just pull the trigger and turn off any TV in the universe. It's very elegant and beautiful. The hardest part of this project was actually finding a television. It took me four days until uh, I decided to just go down to the local bar and ask the bartender if I could turn off their TV. Uh, no one I know owns an actual TV set. The next step for this is to uh, put in the codes for turning an Apple computer off or putting it to sleep. And I think that will be much more fun than uh, just TVs. My name is Guy Dickinson. I've built a ham radio base station that you can operate remotely over the internet. My project consists of uh, an IC7000 radio, uh, a dipole which is installed on the roof which is just made out of a long piece of speaker wire essentially, a single board computer uh, and a USB sound card interface uh, as well as the obvious internet connection to connect to the whole thing. I've been a ham radio person for uh, many years, but I hadn't really found a community in New York City and I learned that many of the resistor folks are uh, qualified ham radio operators and were, had equipment and space and time and willingness to support a project like this. I think ham radio is a great opportunity for makers and hackers to experiment with radio type projects. There's lots of things that can be done from the very simple uh, two-way FM-based voice communications to extremely complicated projects like Earth-Moon-Earth -Earth communication with high power bouncing signals off the moon. And I think more ham radio type involvement from the community would be fantastic. And as the sun goes down later, we'll be able to hear a little bit further, hopefully as from as far away as Australia and New Zealand. The project I have is an RFID protective wallet. It's a wallet and a passport holder, which prevents people from uh, snooping on the details of the contents of your credit card or passport. In 2006, I was a victim of identity fraud, and I think that it had something to do with my RFID-enabled credit card. I've been looking for an RFID-protective wallet uh, ever since and haven't found anything that looks really good that is really targeted more towards women. A lot of them look like men's wallets, and actually I made a couple like that, but I really want something that fit my needs. So the main component in the wallet is actually aluminum, and here it is over here. I would say the next phase for the project is uh, I'm looking at RFID technology to embed RFID chip on the outside of the wallet so that if your wallet does get read, it actually sends kind of a snarky message to the person that's reading it. So thanks for visiting NYC Resistor. If you'd like to keep up with what we're up to, check out our blog. It's www.nycresistor.com. Or you can come to our craft nights on Thursdays from 6.30 to 9.30. Or take a class. You'll find our class listing off our main website.